everyone and welcome back to another Stationery Pals video. As the new school year approaches, students usually want to be fully prepared for it, whether by buying new stationery or adjusting their mindset. Although students typically have good intentions, misconceptions about what actually works can lead them to use ineffective strategies. The school season is actually full of traps, and we can easily fall into them if we are not careful. This video is not about finding the extra 1%, but ensuring you do the 99% right first, and hopefully helps students seeking to identify ways to improve their learning and performance and avoid mistakes, especially during the back to school season. So, today we'll share 10 common mistakes students make during the back to school season, things that can actually hinder students rather than help them. So, without further ado, let's just get started. Number one, studying with gadgets. Yeah, well done. For this new semester, you might have tried and successfully convinced your mom to buy you the latest MacBook and iPad for the sake of studying and using the student discount. But did you know that studying with gadgets is very distracting? These gadgets push messages at you all the time, whether it's posts and status updates from people close to you or video updates from your favorite YouTubers and these distract you. As soon as a message of interest catches you in the middle of your study, it could be three hours later before you realize that you haven't completed any study tasks, just like now. Number two, only rereading your notes for revision. Have you thought about your revision strategy for the new school year? Or are you still going to continue to just reread your notes as your only strategy? A recent study reported that 84% of students reread their notes during revision whilst 55% classified it as their number one strategy. Only rereading notes is such a poor technique because you end up skimming the text and fail to actually process or consider the content. This means it doesn't end up in your long-term memory. Maybe this semester is the time to switch to a more effective revision strategy. Number three, taking notes in class verbatim. I'm curious about how you took notes in class last semester. Did you copy verbatim what the teacher said? Any other concerns or issues that we should talk about before I get into? Did you find uh, it effective? More, like, Do you plan to use this method of note taking again in the new semester? Taking notes in class verbatim could lead to shallower learning. Instead, by selectively writing notes in your own words, you take more time to process the information and embed it in your brain. Among the many note taking methods, the Cornell note taking method is the one I personally found to be more effective and those who are interested in it can Google it and learn. Number four, studying in the same place. With the new school year, we all need to pick up our books again, but are you still confined to your desk to study? Well, according to researchers, this is not ideal and it is much better to learn in a different place because memory may be context dependent. You can use the study environment to help you recall the content better. Let's say this chapter was prepared in a library the library scene can help you recall what you are learning. Frequent changes in the environment will help you retain knowledge in the long term. Wouldn't it be a good idea to do your revision in the classroom where the exams are held for the new school year? Number five, relying on highlighting and full page highlight. Does this look like your notes? The whole page is highlighted in different colors. Can you really get the content and key points you need from this note instantly? You try to study by reading the notes but somehow end up highlighting everything and remembering nothing. This approach doesn't push you to carefully consider why you are highlighting and, perhaps more importantly, might give you a false sense of mastery. Promise me, let's think it through before each highlight for the new semester, shall we? Did you know that taking pictures of your teacher's slides doesn't help your memory? Before I explain it to you in detail, if you like this video, please press the like button and tell me in the comments section what other common mistakes students make in studying. Number six, taking photos or screenshots of lecture slides. Are you still going to just take pictures of your teacher's slides for the new school year? Have you ever reviewed, even once, what you have photographed in the past? We all take pictures of lecture slides and often think that if I take a picture of it, I have mastered the slide. However, there is evidence that this does not have a positive impact on your memory because you are not meaningfully interacting with the material. Instead, to improve your chances of remembering the course content, you should annotate copies of the lecture slides as you study. Number seven, leaving the hard task until the end. 
With the new semester, you will start facing assignments, papers, presentations, and exams again. Are you more used to completing the essay tasks first and then putting the hardest ones at the end? For example, you have four papers due. You plan to finish three of the easier papers first and save the hardest one for last. When you get to the due date, you find that you can't finish the last one for various reasons. The harder the task, the more energy and attention you need to complete it. Starting each day of your life, it makes sense to complete the hardest tasks in the morning when your biological clock keeps you the most awake. Trying to do these tasks later in the day will make them more difficult and increase the likelihood that they will be left until the next day. Number 8. Studying one way only. Following only a single way of learning and ignoring other ways is detrimental to the performance in the exams. Maybe you only like to learn by reading, but reading is not the solution for every learning style. Some concepts require us to recall them quickly and effectively. For them, using flashcards might be a better way to go. Similarly, some concepts do not require mere rote memorization of facts and concepts. They require actual knowledge. There are many experiments in chemistry that, once you do this test yourself, you will remember it for the rest of your life. Instead of using only one method, try multiple methods. Use flashcards, read things out loud, learn by hearing and listening, and just apply your knowledge to the practical aspects of what you've learned. Number 9. Studying with an empty stomach. Please make it a habit to get breakfast before class in the new semester, okay? Some students eat very little before class because they think that if they eat a lot, they will feel sleepy and eventually not be able to concentrate in class. This is true. If you eat too much, you will feel sleepy. But remember one thing. A lack of nutrients can do more damage to your concentration. What you need to do is not eat too much and consume in moderation foods that are good for you and provide essential nutrients for your brain, such as avocados, fish, and dark chocolate. Number 10. Buying supplies not on the shopping list. I'm sure you're ready to buy some stationery for the new school year. But have you created a stationery shopping list? Remember, it's no use buying stationary items just because they're cute or trendy, especially if they don't meet the requirements on your shopping list. That's why we are against buying items just because they look or sound better. You can shop for stationary by following our advice. Don't get the decorative pencils covered in the plastic film. They usually don't sharpen well. Crayola crayons really do work the best, and cheap glue sticks don't always work well. With a Zebra mechanical pencil, you never have to worry about lead breaking again. These are the things where the brand or type really does matter. After hearing about my 10 mistakes, how many of them accurately describe your current situation? I hope this video will help you recognize some of your mistakes. However, everyone has a learning style that works for them, even if it doesn't work for others. Let me know in the comments section about what other learning mistakes you've experienced. If you enjoyed this video, I bet you'll enjoy my 10 must-have supplies for back to school. Check it out now! Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. I hope you enjoy the video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!